Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my April favorites and April for me is the month that I got back into the stores and did a little bit of shopping. Um, there have been a lot of sales going on this month including the Sephora spring savings event so I have quite a few new things to talk about and I thought I'd start off with beauty. So the first thing I picked up from the Sephora spring savings event was the Sol de Janeiro Beige de Flor, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, Elastic Cream. And um, I'm a huge fan of the Boom Boom Cream and I decided to try this since I've heard a lot of hype about it. A lot of people saying that it smells like Baccarat Rouge 540. I always find it hard to get these lids off. Um, I can definitely see how it does have a little hint of Baccarat, but what I get even more from this is actually Burberry Her. So it is a little bit more of a, I would say, fruitier, sort of sweeter version um, than Baccarat Rouge, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a really nice thick cream. And this particular cream, I think is made with like collagen and um, I'm looking at the, what it says, and retinol mimicking some type of oil that is retinol mimicking. I don't even know what that means, but I know it means good things for aging skin and tightening <laughs> your skin. So I was all about trying it and um, I can't really comment yet on whether it's doing anything for my skin aside from being very moisturizing and having a really nice scent, but it is um, a really beautiful one to pair up with a lot of the different perfumes. I would definitely layer this with my Baccarat Rouge 540 and all of my Burberry Hers and other fragrances I have that have that same sort of sweet, fruity, floral sort of smell. So really loving this. The next thing I picked up in the sale was the Westman Atelier Bon Brow, and I was so excited when I saw that this was coming out. Um, this is just a brow pencil. I have it actually on my brows today. I've been using it every single day since I got it. What I love about it, um, it is one of those sort of angled um, brow pencils that some of the ones I've tried before have been a little bit either too dry or too waxy or just, you know, I couldn't really get it to work for me. This is like an amazing formula. You need a very light touch um, to deposit the product. Um, and I got mine in the shade, by the way, Bark, which is a really nice cool tone brown. And I really struggle to find the right brown <laughs> for me. Um, normally my hair is a little cooler tone just because of the grays in it. But right now I actually just recently did a color gloss and um, so it's a little bit deeper and richer, but normally it is sort of that sort of ashy brown and this is perfect for that. So I was really happy with the color. I'm really happy with the formula. And I love that on the end of this, it has a nice little spoolie um, that is like the perfect spoolie. I can't really even explain. Some spoolies are almost like too thick um, to really get through your brows. This one is really thin and nice and um, gets your brows into place. And I just cannot say enough about this. Absolutely worth the splurge for anyone considering it. The next thing I picked up in the sale is from Pat McGrath. I picked up the concealer and the setting powder. And I am so, so pleased with this concealer. Um, it is a really great kind of creamy formula, typical applicator. I got mine in the shade, um, I can't even read it, but I know it is the light medium. I think it's shade number 10 and it has a little bit of a peachy undertone. It's kind of perfect for me. A um, few things I love about this. Number one, I love the fact that I had read a lot of reviews and seen a lot of people on YouTube talking about it, saying that it was a moisturizing formula that didn't really draw attention to your, or settle into your fine lines and wrinkles, which is very important to me. Number two, it was a very high coverage, which I only use this so, so sparingly because I don't want to draw attention to that area of my face. And I have very dark circles to conceal. So if I only have to use one product versus a corrector and a concealer, I'm very happy about that. And with this, I can. And um, the third thing I loved about it was just that the shades, they have such an amazing shade range. I actually picked the wrong shade online. Um, so I had to go into store and exchange it. I thought I for sure I would be a medium <laughs> and I ended up being a light to medium, I believe. So yeah, I've really been loving this. And then the product I picked up to go with it that I've heard rave reviews about is just this little setting powder. Um, comes in a little case like this. It's got this teeny tiny mirror on the back. Um, but this is in the shade medium and I'm actually, I'm loving it. Um, it really is a 
super lightweight, um, can't even detect that it's on your face. It does not settle into anything because you can't even see it, but yet you can feel that it sets down um, your concealer. I like to use it just around my T-zone and under my eyes, and I really love the shade medium, but I'm actually considering getting um, either the yellow or the white, or it's really not called white. I think it's called light, but it's just like a translucent powder that looks white, but I don't think it goes on that way. Um, if anyone has experience with either of those, let me know, but I know that would be even more brightening. This really goes on super natural, but every now and then I do like to add a little brightness under my eyes when I can. And because this is such a great formula, I don't mind applying it as a powder. Sometimes I go without powder under my eyes just because Again, I don't like drawing attention to the crepiness <laughs> that's going on under there, but um, yeah, this is a really great product and I highly recommend. The next few products I have to share are some blushes that I have been obsessed with for the last few months and I just have been meaning to share and have forgotten, but um, I just got a new one, so I thought I'd talk about all three of them. These are from Persona Cosmetics, and I got these all at Ulta. So the first one I picked up was in the shade Carmel, and it looks like this. It's this beautiful sort of dusty rose color. I can't even tell you what it is about this, but this is like a magic blush. <laughs> it is a powder blush. Um, it's very matte, so you're not going to get any glitter or shine or things that draw attention. I know everyone loves the NARS Orgasm blush, but I cannot wear it because there's just some sort of um, glow going on there that is drawing attention to bad things. So <laughs> I really prefer to wear the more matte um, formulas when it comes to powder blushes. And this one is matte, but yet somehow um, it just kind of goes on. I have a different shade that I'll show you on today. It goes on and still leaves your face. You can see like the sheen underneath. It's very, very pigmented. And this shade is actually quite deceiving. I wear this quite a lot and it really brightens up my face, even though it looks a little dull. Um, it's beautiful. And I would say that shade would go with so, so many skin tones. The second one I picked up is the shade Georgia. And this is a beautiful kind of peachy toned um, color. And again, it looks kind of muted here, but when you put this on, it just adds such this beautiful sort of apricot color to your cheeks. And I love actually combining this with the Carmel. I'll put on like maybe a little peach first and then add a pop of pink on to just the um, apples of my cheeks. And I just think they're gorgeous. So I recently heard uh, or had seen in a video someone talking about a new shade that was released or maybe it's not new but she was talking about it and I hadn't seen it in Ulta and it actually wasn't available in store because I looked for it um, so I had to get it on the website. This is the shade Bubble and this is the bright pink, that pop of pink that I love so much that I talk about all the time. I've been obsessed with the pop of pink on the apples of my cheeks ever since I read Bobbi Brown's first book and went out and bought her pale pink blush. Um, and here's what it looks like. Very similar sort of shade. This is that beautiful, perfect pop of pink that I have just on the apples of my cheeks right now. And I can't even tell you how sparingly I have to apply this because it's just so pigmented. No matter what other blush I have underneath, I pop this on and I just feel better. So really, really enjoying this. Next up, I have some fragrance favorites for the month. I picked up a couple new um, fragrances from Sephora and one not from Sephora, so I'll go through them all. The first one is Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid. And this is a fragrance that actually I picked up in store when I was exchanging my Pat McGrath concealer. Um, I wasn't planning on getting it. I was just going through the fragrance aisle smelling some of the new releases and I came across this one and I just couldn't stop sm smelling myself. It was just beautiful. It definitely has the scent of flower bomb in it, but on top of that there is just like this um, fruity, bright floral that is perfect for spring. Um, it's just a little bit sweeter and a little bit more I guess uplifting than I would say Flower Bomb is, and it's just lovely. So I had to get it. I did get the one ounce size because I do have way too many fragrances. So that is one I'm loving. The next fragrance I picked up from Sephora wasn't available in store, so I ended up ordering it online. And this is Valentino Donna's Born in Roma, Valentino Donna Born in Roma Coral Fantasy. I think that's the name of it anyway. And this is a kiwi scent um, with a lot of other fruitiness in the background. Um, I will say that I like this perfume, but I am not like 100% sold on it. I 
feel like it's really, really sweet. And I got it because of the kiwi, but um, it is really sweet. And in the first, you know, burst that you get of it, it is just way too sweet for me. But then as it dries down, it does kind of lose a lot of the kiwi and just become like a fruity, fresh floral. Nothing really groundbreaking, but um, still a nice, fresh, I guess, scent for the spring and summertime. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time before I decide whether I love it or not. But right now, ooh, <laughs> almost dropped it. Right now, it's just a like for me. And the last fragrance I picked up this month is Chanel's 1957. This is from the Le Exclusif line. And this is a fragrance that I had smelled um, probably about a month ago. I was in Palm Beach actually with Lissy from Lissy in the City. And I had gone into the Chanel boutique and was spraying on perfumes and um, had tried this one. And I knew from the notes and from what people were saying about it, it is an iris scent. It is a nice powdery iris with a lot of suede in it. I knew I would love it and of course I did. So I didn't end up getting it that day because I was spending so much money at that time on our home, <laughs> but I waited and um, ended up ordering it online because I just knew it would be a perfect fragrance for the springtime and even into the summer. I think this is really an all year round scent. It's got like that suede cashmere and I don't know, irisy notes that just make it a little bit powdery, very soft, and just something that you can wear anytime. And it's just very light and I would say comforting. So really loving this fragrance. And the last fragrance that is a favorite for the month that I did not purchase this month, but have just been really enjoying in the month of April is uh, Jo Malone's Mimosa and Cardamom. Now, this is a fragrance that I used to, where I lived previously, love wearing in kind of the fall and winter time, but it is so beautiful for spring. Like, I don't even know what I was thinking. It is so beautiful for spring, and I've been wearing it a lot around the house lately. It's very sort of warm and sweet and comforting, and it's light, um, it's fresh, it's, it's just beautiful. And so, yeah, I've been really getting a lot of use out of this this month. And moving on to some fashion favorites that I picked up this month. There were so many sales going on. Um, I had gone into J. Crew and come across some dresses. Actually, they are marketed on the website as um, shirts, but I think they're called the beach shirt. I will leave it in the in the description below. Um, but they are a long sort of cover up style shirt that is perfect on me as a dress. It comes just above my knee, um, so it's long enough to wear as a dress. They're linen. I got one in white and I got the other in this sort of blue and white stripe and I am obsessed with these. They are so cute with like a sun hat and you know a pair of sandals, just really casual and comfy and a one and done sort of outfit for me in the area where I live, which is like being on vacation all year long. <laughs> And I picked up two more dresses from Jenny Kane during a sale they were running, and I was so excited. I had some points saved up from their new loyalty program, and um, I had really wanted to get this dress last summer, probably even the summer before, and it was just at a price point I didn't want to pay. So between the sale and my points, I didn't end up spending very much, and I ended up getting it in two colors. So this is what um, they call, try to hold it up here, the... Um, the summer dress and I know there are two versions of the summer dress. There's one that is a seersucker material and then there is this one. This one is just the standard summer dress and it is a midi length kind of tiered dress with a really simple neckline and it is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it on. I was so so thrilled trying it on. It fit me perfectly. I got mine in the size medium um, and yeah, it's really hit or miss with me with dresses. It depends on the style, where the waist hits, whatever. But I ordered two colors thinking I would only keep one or the other. And I, of course, ended up keeping them both. Um, but this is the sort of beige color one. And I'm even considering at some point when, you know, I see how many points I've accumulated from some of my recent purchases, um, getting it in white because I love it that much. This is like the perfect summer dress. It like is a one and done piece. It's a midi length on me. It um, is just so easy. It's casual, but not too casual. It's like the perfect dress for summer. So yeah, really happy that I finally picked these up. And last but not least, my favorite handbag for this month has to be my Louis Vuitton pochette in the monogram print. You all have heard me talk 
on and on about this bag. Um, I just absolutely love it with the crossbody strap. It is the perfect sort of grab and go hands-free bag. I've been wearing it as we've been shopping for our home. We've been to Home Goods and Ikea and a million different furniture stores and Lowe's and just all over the place. So we have <laughs> been doing a lot of shopping and this has been the sort of perfect bag that I don't even have to think about. I just throw it on and go. Um, it's also great to go out in the evenings. Um, I've been wearing a lot of kind of longer maxi or midi dresses and things like that and I feel like this bag is perfect. Um, it just kind of goes with everything and it goes with my lifestyle so well now. It used to be sort of my more casual bag and now it's like my everyday bag so really have been loving this. So those are all my favorites for the month of April. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a great week and I will see you soon in my next one.